Hello there, I'm Tate Dave and today we are just looking at the process of getting this X230 into this condition. You'll see more throughout the video, but advance warning, this is a long form video and the best thing to do is just like have a beverage and sit back and relax and enjoy. Um, spoiler alert, we get it into full working condition except for the fact that we have to restore system restore the operating system, not quite sure why that is, but hardware wise all the all, all everything we wanted to do with it got done. So if you enjoy this long form content, sit back, relax, sup a beer or a cup of tea or coffee if you're real man. No I'm joking. Um and yeah just enjoy the show. Thanks. Tech misses. We're trying to snipe an X two thirty four windows open to rule them all oh God, we'll get ready. and in the darkness bind them let's prop this up here feel me oh no i'll just wait i can't take the tension so extreme she's ready braced oh. for action oh my gosh my heart is going yeah 24 someone's on 24 yeah yeah go yeah, yeah, yeah. 25. Line up the next one. Uh, How many seconds have we got? Six seconds. Go with 30. Thirty-five. Did we get it? Yes! 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 Yes, look at that, look at that. Yeah. You won this auction, yes. Oh. 30 quid plus seven pound and 28 pence delivery. So it's the i5, it's got four gigs of RAM, 320 gig hard drive, screens destroyed. Um, and hopefully you will see it on the channel. Hello there, I'm Tech Dave, and today we are looking at, as you may have seen from the bit, the bit at the start of the footage, but it's not something I sniped on eBay. Now, I had the battery for this, um, it's just, I don't know if you can see that, a two power nine cell. I already had that because I bought it by mistake, and it got me thinking because <clears throat> I basically sold the majority of my ThinkPad collection, which is painful but necessary because I wanted to buy a camera which I'm, is on the way, but I still haven't uh, received it yet. Um, but I do have remaining my X230 tablet and my T430 and my X1 Carbon just over there as well. Whoops, Daisy. Um, and yeah, so I basically sniped this for £30 plus £7.20 postage and packaging. And it's an X, just a standard X230, but got quite a few faults let's see if we can get in here and show you what they are so we've got a cracking along this back plate which I found a replacement for for about 20 quid so that should be cool um, the screen which I'll actually show you on if, if, if I left the charge which I did the screen I don't know how well you can see that but it's absolutely just destroyed um, keyboard needs replacing as well because it's got some dead keys but it's the i5, it's got the fingerprint reader, it's got um, now got a 9 cell battery um, and I'm going to kind of refurbish it and see what you know, what repairs I can do on it. The plan currently is new screen, new rear bezel, 9 cell battery again as I already mentioned I'm going with a 240 gig M SATA SSD and then I'm going to put a 500 gig SATA hard drive in there, install Windows 10 and I was thinking possibly a Linux distribution because I started messing around with Mint, Linux Mint, but with um, a tiling window manager and all that kind of stuff on my X200 and I got kind of into it so I'm going to probably, this did come with a, a, Windows, a Windows license that seemed to activate when I installed Windows on it so that's good. Um, so it originally came, it's got a Windows 8 Pro sticker, so I'm guessing it must have been released a bit later in the product cycle. Um, yeah, and so we're going to clean her up, we're going to fix her up, and I'm not going to flip her because I decided quite adamantly that I really like X230s, and the guy I sold mine to is extremely happy with it. Um, 
I saw my X230 as a music production machine. And I just, the form factor, the, the size, the 12 inch form factor, it's a bit less bulky than my X230 tablet. And sometimes, I don't know, I was just, if I'm honest, I was just craving having one again. Uh, and to rebuild my ThinkPad collection now, I've got the bits I needed. So, um, see you later on in the video where we should be building this bad boy into a working condition. So, as you can see, we've got bezel, cables, LCD, housing for X230. So, I've ordered that. I've ordered just a standard X230 UK keyboard because it was the easiest and cheapest way to do it. And I've got a X230 laptop screen display and it's actually a 128 gig m sata ssd so as you can see it's all ordered now so we just have to play the waiting game in terms of when we're going to have the stuff for this this laptop but uh for you that won't be any passage of time whereas for me it could be a couple of weeks so peace see you in a bit so i'm um, just got a bit excited with the old X230 because I'm, I'm waiting for the parts to come still and what I'm going to do is incrementally do the upgrades as each thing arrives uh, but I decided I'm probably going to use it as my main portable device because I've obviously got my desktop here that you're recording on now but I thought if I could add we've got I thought if I could add the parts that I'm going to get in there to use it as a daily driver that would be useful so we've got DDR3 828 gig dims of PCL3 2100S the Samsung modules. I've got a SanDisk 480 gig. It's 480 gig. I don't know if you can see that properly, but it's 480 gig SanDisk SSD. So I'm just going to switch camera angles, and then it's already got the nitel battery, as I mentioned already. And then I'm going to open her up and take a little look inside and see what condition the internals are in, because I'm slightly concerned. I don't know whether you can see, but there's a bit of tarnishing on the keyboard. And I just want to see if that's gone to any of the internal components. So I'm going to open her up. I'm going to switch angles. I'll open her up, install these bits that I've got here. And then, yeah, you'll see each part being installed as it happens. So here we have the device. And I'm just going to do the simple upgrades first. So at the moment, just to make sure it was all working, um, I put in a 60 gig, as I always do, 60 gig uh, SATA SSD. So we're going to swap that out first. And I got all the drivers installed on it. So what I'm actually doing is taking a 500 gig drive out of my T430. Um, as you can see, it's missing the tabs on the caddy. So I'm going to have to go in here with a pair of pliers. Oh, you can't see that. There we go, missing the tabs. Oh, hold on. Let's get the camera at a bit more of that angle. There, there we go. I might speed this up. There we go, whip the drive out. And then put the little rubbery bits on there. Came out that way up. It's always good when you're putting in drives to check it's lined up, so you've got that on the left. And my hope is that, because I've got my Windows licenses all digitally linked to my account. I'm hoping that it should auto activate this as soon as I power her up and then we can just get the drivers on there which I'll show you via um, it's probably screen capture because the display is just destroyed. I haven't actually checked whether this is two two gig dims or one four gig dim. I think it's one four gig but we'll soon find out. I'm tempted to whip the keyboard off, but I might do that later once I've got more parts. Let's see what we've got under here. This should be going turbo fast, so you hear my voice go weird. Yeah, one 4 gig Samsung. Oh, that's not too bad. 12800. Ooh, it's a bit... something stuck down there. Ooh, it's got a sticker sticking it down. That's not cool. What's that from? Oh, that's actually off the sticker there. Well, that's interesting. That's off the RAM. Okay, so one 8 gig stick there. One 8 gig stick here. 
So that's all I can do at the moment till I get more parts delivered. But it's just to keep me from going insane with excitement. And then I'll switch over to display capture, show you me picking up the drivers and everything. So, basic upgrade parts are done. Now all that's left to do is just fix the device. So we've got a new bezel with all the bits and then we'll have to transfer the camera and everything into it and the new display as well. But for now she's upgraded as much as she's going to get. So I'll switch it right over. See you in a second. So here we are, we've got the X230 docked here so we can get the digital display out going down into the capture card into my new PC, which I call the Mothership. Look at this glorious PC. 32 gigs of RAM, quad core, eight thread, third gen i7, eight gig graphics card like eight terabytes of drives in there and then you can see my SSD just like hanging there and it's all the LEDs. Very nice. Uh, so yeah, we got, we got that going by capture card and as you can see up here, we've got the BIOS, so I'm just gonna switch over there. And you can see we've got the 16 gigs of RAM, we've got a 2.6 gigahertz i5, which I believe turbo's up to 3.3 or 3.5, I can't remember. Let's just look through the BIOS. So we've got... Well, it's picked up the drives. It's got the correct date and time. You know, it's an American format. The fingerprint reader, everything seems to be working. Blah, 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 blah. So we're just going to boot in. Save and exit. And then boot into Windows. And hopefully it should pick up all the drivers straight away. I might have to blur some bits to see how it goes. It should be fine. Oh, I just disconnected that. No, there we go. Yeah, booting straight into Windows 10, which is nice. Let's mute the audio from the capture card. Hopefully it will pick up all the drivers magically and powerfully through the power of magic and Windows power. That is one of the only reasons anyone rational would use Windows 10 for anything. I'll uh, be patient while it picks up the drivers. Getting ready. Okay, I'm not gonna make you watch this, so pause that. And just like that, we are literally less time than it took for me to go have a cigarette, which is actually quite a quick endeavor for me. Uh, we are into the desktop. Let me see, now, I need to be looking across here, otherwise I'm gonna see things with a delay. So the first thing we wanna see is, did it pick up my Windows license? Update and security. Yeah, fixed now, that's to be expected. Are we recording? Yes, we are. This mouse I'm using is a bit broken. But yeah, let's see. We'll do that off screen. In fact, let's just pause that one second. So as you can see, Windows is activated by a digital license there, so that's good. Windows update is just picking up things for this device, so that'll take some time. And then we can go to device manager. I'll fix my account stuff off camera probably. This dodgy mouse takes time to click. So we've got, we've got Wi-Fi, we've got our Ethernet, we've got everything working. The only thing that's flagging up there is that Hamachi thing. This is from when I was gaming before. It's picked up everything else. I didn't see network adapter, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have one installed. We've got 500 gig hard drive, so it's detecting the dock correctly as well. And we are basically in business. So I've got a few little bits of cleanup to do. But, let's go to task manager. You can see we've got Windows 10 performing. What's going on here? There we go. Windows 10 performing correctly. We've got 480 gig drive, we've got 16 gigs of RAM. CPU is the Core i5-3320M, which I believe is the one I had in my system before, I'm not quite sure. And we've got SSD, and then this hard drive here is in the dock, both 500 gig. So I think that's all I needed to do that I can do on camera. 
Um, see you once all the parts arrive. I have received a package containing a keyboard, which is nice. And it's got my address on the back, so I'm just going to keep it this way. It's got a UK keyboard, we've got from eBay. It looks to be in minter conditioner, sealed into the box. I'm describing it because it doesn't show my address. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brand new. Here we go. Brand new X230, T430 style keyboard. Oh, it's immaculate. I don't know if this is going across on camera, but like, it's perfect. Perfect. Da, 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 da. Let's fit this bad boy. Back to bird in my check one, two. Here we have the keyboard, here we have the devices in the dock at the moment. So i dock that chip. Pardon my French. Um, now I think this is as simple as just obviously remove the battery. I think it's just as simple as removing the screws that are marked. So there's trackpad, trackpad, no. Trackpad, trackpad. So there's keyboard, keyboard. Uh, I think that's it. So it's just that one there. I've trouble getting these back in as well. The keyboard on. This one here. Well, my old, uh, well, my old one just had this screw missing because I struggled to get it back in. Let's see, do they just drop out? They do. Excellent. And we flip her up. Unless I'm mistaken, this should just slide out. No? Have I missed something? Oh, there we go. Let's use a uh, flat edge. There we go. Just to gently oik it out. I don't know whether I need to get underneath there to... I can't remember. Now we get to have a look and see if there's any tarnishing. So there we go. That's the keyboard out. I don't know whether you can see on here doesn't really capture it but there's a bit of like damage that you can see where the keyboard was damaged and it looks like this tracked a little bit in here now when I've got to get the display off I might give this a bit of a clean but for now it should be fine CPU fan looks good enough <coughs> no it should just be a case of just clipping this in oh let's do that Tum -tum 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 -tum. Not going in for some reason. That's peculiar. Not got it lined up quite right. Mm -hmm. Try not to get my hair in the way of the shot. There we go. Now you slide it to the back. Oh, it's slightly damaged. Slightly bent. I think I've just corrected that. Slide it to the back drop her in, make sure she's slid all the way back, drop her in, and then, boom, nicely seated, that bending has disappeared, so that's good, and pop those two screws back in, and we're done, I'll show you, I'll do that, I won't bother showing you the screws going in, but yeah, basically that's how you replace the keyboard, job's good, so as you can see, this is the this is the laptop running. Um, let me just turn away. We've got the fully working keyboard. So I just type that in. Trackpad works fine. Track point even. Uh, yeah, I see no issues. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to briefly show that the keyboard does work and the track point works fine. Um, I've got some little bits to do off camera. So the next thing we're going to see is probably going to be the screen. Based on my eBay deliveries, we've got the screen next, and then we've got the bezel, which I'm probably just going to take the back plate 
from because it's the the front bezel on this is fine. Um, it's just this back plate that I'm probably going to graft graft on because um, I don't see any issues with cracking in the plastic on the front of this, and it's got the webcam already set up in there, so it should be a bit easier to do it that way. Um, so obviously this isn't necessarily relevant for you, but in a couple of days I'll be filming the display, and then like tomorrow, tomorrow I'm getting the display. It's only a TN panel. It's only the original panel, I think. It's, I don't think it's the IPS because it was like it was only like f less than fifty quid. But we will eventually have a fully working Nova X two thirty that the initial price of was thirty pounds. So see you on the other side. Day four, the screen arrives. There we go, so I don't know, the model on this is the CN, what looks like a battery, 8Y9T2, uh, I might, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's just, it's not the IPS, it's it's just a TM panel as far as I'm aware, but <coughs> I'm going to fit this into my X230, so I'll move to a different camera and we'll start the show. So here we are, we've got the new display, so we'll put that to one side for a minute. Dusty desk, I should be ashamed of myself. And then we've got the X220 coming over right now. And I don't know if you need to take the battery out for this, but I'm going to just in case. So. just watched a couple of videos on how to do this and it seems quite straightforward but I'm a bit nervous anyway so you pop out these little bits of plastic here oh don't do that set them to one side because you'll be needing them again let's see if I can get it without breaking it good and so I don't know whether I made this clear earlier in the video, but I have this whole this whole assembly, except the display, coming in the post as well to replace the damaged back plate. And then you want to go to. Let's see, can I get any closer? Not really. That's as close as we're going to get, unfortunately. Um, and then you take out these two screws. That's one. As you can see, I'm going quite a chilled pace with this video. And then it's a case of, excuse the pun, moving this front bezel with like lots of care. There you go, that side's come up. So you can get a nail in there or, or like a plectrum or a spudger or whatever they're called. But I've just got super long nails from playing the guitar, so I'm just using them. And then you can just pop up these, hopefully none of these little plastic tabs break, being as careful as I can. end here. Let's pop that around my coffee carefully. Quick swig of coffee. It's early in the day but I was excited to do it. And then so we've got a screw there, a screw there, a screw there and a screw there. So we're just going to do them in order. It doesn't matter what order you do them in obviously. As far as I'm aware, in here. Now we'll be able to have a look inside at the damage as well. 
I think, from what I gather with this device, is it sort of got cracked and wet, so I might need to put the battery under there to find a bit of support because the, the back plate is completely fractured right down the middle, well, towards the back of the device. Let's see, push against that. Is that threaded? Oh, you're fucking kidding me, I hope not. Right, I might have to get a more precision screwdriver for that one. Looks like this display has been replaced before. I'm not certain of that. But. One more go, and then if it gets damaged. Yeah, okay. I'll just pause the video and get a better screwdriver. One second. So yeah, this this top left screw is threaded, almost. I don't quite know what to do to get it to work. So if I can get it out is the main thing. Yes, yes, champion. Got it. Yes. That was sketchy. Might have to avoid putting that one back in and hope that my new display housing um, that I bought online will, because uh, I'm not putting a threaded screw back in because that's just asking for trouble later on down the line. And then you have to kind of like alleviate this wire. It's not tucked in so real good. So I think this has had some maintenance done on it before because the th screws were threaded. And you just kind of lift up the display holder, don't you? Just lift the display, come on. Lean it forward onto the keyboard. And then, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little bit of plastic here that needs to gently, gently be removed so it doesn't break, let's see. Try and tease it off with these pliers, these grips here, just to get a bit more leverage. There we go. Oh, it's lifted off that bit of plastic there. There we go. And then I think, is there a locking mechanism? I can't remember now. Um, I'm not seeing a locking mechanism. Let me just pull off. Whatever you do, don't break it, David. <coughs> I think it just should just... Um, pause it and investigate further. We'll do one second. Oh, with a careful bit of finagling, I just lifted. I just lifted it. I was worried. I'll show you. I was worried that this bit of metal was part of the connector here, but it wasn't. So that's my dead display gone. Put that there for now. Now to carefully do the entire process in reverse. It should be relatively straightforward. But I'll leave it in for your viewing pleasure. Free, feel free to skip ahead slightly if you can't be bothered to watch. Mm. It's in fairly decent condition. It's got a scratch protector on it. Has it got a scratch protector on it? Or is it just that little bit of plastic? Just a little bit of be on it. Right, well we'll get that off in a minute. So yeah, you just, am I still recording? Yes I am. You just reverse the process now at this stage. So you slot that in there. Sorry it's not, if it's not a very good angle. This is the best I could do with the resources I have on hand. Camera wise. Still waiting for my new camera to arrive. Make sure that's nicely clipped in. Which it is. 
closely lined up. Then, uh, careful not to put fingerprints on, I was going to say, but there you go, fingerprints are on. It seems to be lining up just right. There we go. Now let's return all of those screws to their original place, except the one that was threaded in my case. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. You won't be able to see this on camera, but there's a threaded threaded screw from the top left. So I'm going to hope that that is available in the display housing that I bought and then pop that in there when I put the back on. But we shall we shall see eventually if that's the case. Switch the screw them in. And before I put the housing the, the bezel back on I'm gonna fire her up and see if she works. So it'd be the moment of truth. Because I don't want to have to take the display bezel off again if it doesn't work. Oh, that fracturing is really coming into play now on the back. Tum -tum 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 -tum. Let's make sure that's threaded correctly. Yes, it is. There's no other screw there. Put that in the top left. So I'm guessing this is a, a refurbished model that then got damaged or something. Because that threading on the screw I didn't do. So someone's had this display off before. My, I'm inclined to believe that what happened is someone built a working machine out of a damaged machine. Right, let's slip the battery in. I hope this is safe. Who knows? I suppose we'll find out if I die. Drum roll, please. I expect there to be full drum rolls taking place in the world of YouTube while this is happening. Fire her up. ThinkPad! The ThinkPad logo! A fully working screen! Yes. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, what a glorious, glorious feeling. Let's polish the display up a little bit. Oh, it looks lovely. I'm not going to log in. It looks brand new. And sharp. It looks really crisp, the image. So that's good. <coughs> and then it's just a case of clipping this bad boy back in. Hoping that I've lined everything up nice. back on in a minute. Well yes, we basically have a display fully fitted, working, which needs a bit of a clean, but other than that, it's working hunky-dory. A little bit of a misalignment up here. Let's get this little bit of tape off there. A little bit misaligned, I think I can fix that when I put the bezel on. The bezel, but I keep calling it bezel. When I put the back plate back on. All right, I'm just going to put these two screws back in, put these little plastic bits on, and then we'll see you later on for the rest of the video. You can see how shiny it is. It's a really crisp display image, so we'll review that in a minute. Thumbs up. So straight off the bat, you can see me there. It's in the, the screen, uh, which will make my point perfectly. It's a gloss display. Let's fire her up. Oh, the button's not seated quite right. I'm going to have to do some polishing with this bad boy, but yeah, it seems to be a gloss, possibly TN panel. It, like, the viewing angles aren't incredible, but I've never had a gloss display before. Let me just uh, get this off camera. One sec. Let's see what resolution we're getting. Oh, glossy display, that's very nice actually. Not ideal for working outside. And it's obviously picking up 
the correct resolution, so that's fine. 1366 by 768. But it looks. There's, I don't know whether you can. I realise I've not got it in camera properly. But it looks a lot better. So I tried to get the fingerprint reader working in Windows. It does not, in fact, work. But it looks sharp. It looks really sharp. So this is better than a panel I've had before. So I don't know whether I just looked out. Let's see what. I don't know if you can see any of that really. That's a full brightness. And let's see. Watch one of my videos. Do 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 do. Big. That's it. Um. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. I, d I can't really do it justice with this webcam. But other than the reflectiveness of the gloss, other than the reflectiveness of the gloss, that looks a lot better than <laughs> any 1366 by 768 screen I've ever had in an X230. I can't do a comparison, but yeah, it looks really sharp. I suppose I'll get used to the glossiness. I mean, like, if you take it into direct sunlight, for example, that's going to be annoying as fuck. But I'm, I'm still happy. It was a lot cheaper than going for the IPS display, so I'm happy. Colours really pop as well. I don't know whether it does it justice, but it looks really deep blacks, really vibrant, kind of... Oh, yeah, I'm extremely happy with that, despite the gloss finish. Nice. So if you made it this far into the video, you're my new hero. <coughs> because it's an extremely long play format. Um, I'm probably going to do a full review of the unit when it's finished. But currently, I've been putting off installing this. So, so I've got to replace the display again into this. Then I've got to mount that into the laptop, um, which means we're going to strip it all down to the motherboard, so it's about to get even longer. So here we are, we've got the laptop, the replacement back bezel, back plate and front bezel, a toolkit, a your coffee. Sit back and relax. Maybe pause the video and make yourself a brew, because this is going to take me a while. So, I've got my How I Fix It guide up, I've got my tools. I'm just going to go through it bit by bit. I'm going to chat to myself, I don't know how much I might speed this up. Um, this video is long already. Right. Battery or not left switch, blah blah blah. Remove battery, look at the hard drive enclosure. So, hard drive enclosure needs to come out because we're basically stripping her all the way back down to the motherboard to be able to access the display housing. And uh, I need a tool to get the hard drive out. Rest assured there'll be some music playing that I'll put in in post. Remove hard drive, remove plastic rails, etc. Remove screws. Okay, so we're going to remove keyboard screws. Before anything else. I'm guessing, if I remember correctly. Oh, I just thought you probably can't hear me that well. Sorry about the noise. Microphone there. Sorry about that noise. One screw. Two screw. There we are. Removing the keyboard. Oh, remove the strip above the keyboard. It says this step is not required. It might be required for what I'm doing. Enable that out of the way. 
Yeah, I didn't need to remove that bit. So that's good. I'm just slowly making a pile of stuff there. Pop the keyboard out, lift keyboard, unplug keyboard, done. Screen module. Okay. We've got five screws, and actually, I should be keeping my screws nice and situated together. So, we've got five screws which are to remove. God knows what. No, five screws apparently. One, two, three, four, five. Removing those top ones as well. Let's just get these ones out for now. I often wonder what people make of my long play format stuff. It's the sort of thing I watch, so. But yeah, if you're more if you if you got this far you're my hero. Um, and I, I'm doing a full review of this unit like for daily driver usage uh, once I finish this video so it could be quite good so what we got, we got those two that one that one so I we'll remove four there there's one I'm missing which is there which doesn't have a screw okay and we've got two here and here. The annoying thing is I should have just been patient and waited to install the screen because now I've got to reinstall the screen again. But that's okay. I'm separate. Now I've got to take the palm rest off. to the motherboard. And you can actually see a bit of the tarnishing start to come out. I don't know how well you guys can see this. But I think I might have a delivery, I'm not sure. Let me pause. Sorry, I'm just waiting on my M SATA SSD to be delivered, so I need to be mindful of that. So we've got the palm rest off. As you can see, no palm rest. Yep, done that. Carefully disconnect the blue and red wires and remove them from the plastic case. Ooh. So we remove the Wi-Fi antenna. Blue and red cables. Let me just check ahead. They're disconnected. White cell and disconnected. I don't know how much of this I need to be doing. Let me just check ahead. I'll pause and be right back. Yeah, so. I think the next day. Where's my. Where's my blessed screwdriver? them and then the next step is to unplug this here which I think is for the display let's carefully remove that yeah <coughs> I'm just reading an iFixit guide I don't know if I mentioned that and then we take these two screws out of here. This is the bit that made me nervous about doing it in the first place. And 
man. So that's a goose gun. And then you just pop in this black frame. Yes. Which if I'm honest needs cleaning. Got a bit of tarnishing on it. Just <coughs> gonna finagle this. Actually I might as well leave it running. Entirely terrifying process, so that's done. And carefully lift up the screen module to detach from the board, apparently. I'm not seeing if that's going to work. Let's see. You won't be able to see what I'm doing for a second. <coughs> that screw's undone. That screw's undone. This should now just, if we make it straight and then slide up, that's still attached there. <coughs> hmm, let me pause. Alright, so a little step that was missed out in the iFixit guide there's two screws on the back here. I loosened and then <coughs> off it comes. So we are now in a position where we can replace the display housing. Oops, Daisy. There's a reason I've been putting off doing this, I tell you. I already fitted the screen once, and I'm not going to do it again now, but that's fine. I'm a bit worried about the routing of the cables. Just gently pulling that off so it doesn't tear the shielding plastic. going to get a cup of coffee and then we're going to mount this display into this and then reverse the process. I'll be back. So now we've got to fit this. It should be relatively straightforward. And then do the whole process in reverse. Perhaps time for another cup of tea you say? Oh. Can you see that? Sliding it in. <coughs> That'd be a hard to lay this. So this is interesting, it's got that stuck to there. That's actually for the display, so that should be inside there. Oh, hello! I just got some posts, I'll be back. Excellent, the final piece of the puzzle is my 128 gig MSATA SSD. We'll put that in in a bit. Let's continue on with this mission. That should be inside the display housing, so I'm a bit concerned about it. I don't know whether you can see that, but the, the display connector is sitting down here. It should be sitting inside, so I need to sort that out. This hasn't got any screws on it, so it should just be a case of popping this off carefully a little bit and then swinging that into there oops Stacy there we go pop that just there for now pop this back on without snapping it because there's nothing to support it at the moment
Okay, first things first. As I so often say, let's get these two back screws in to hold the, the display. This doesn't appear to line up, which is slightly concerning. So you can see that, but this hole doesn't line up, so let's figure that out. If I put this a bit further up, then you can see when I'm off camera, so that's a bit twisted, I think that's what it is. Well, there's something wedged in there now. Something's not quite aligned. So. They're all fine. Nothing blocking it. Just won't, won't sit right for some reason. So why they wouldn't have? Oh, what a ridiculous situation to be in! I'll tell you. Right, so they're out of the way as much as they can be. This side pops in fine. So what's the problem? display is attached. <coughs> so that's just probably not sitting flush there, I think. Finagling, it doesn't seem, mm, <coughs> doesn't seem to want to go in. And I can force it down, but I don't want to break it. This side fits perfectly. So I'm going to screw that in. But I'm at a bit of a crossroads here because it's like. Fix it, you didn't prepare me for this. I might force it right into the right place, I'm hoping. Right, so that's not sitting flush, and I don't know why. Right, pause for more finagling. Okay, so I got the display bits to sit there. I don't know if you can see that on camera, it's slightly, slightly wrong on that right hand side because of this thick wire here, but it'll do for now, let's put it back together because this is such an anxiety provoking thing anyway, I just want to get the job done now. And I'm going to mount the display once I've got it all back together. So, black top plate needs to go back in. Is that the right way? No, it's not. This is the right way. Wonderful engineering job, really. I like, imagine trying to do this on a MacBook. You just wouldn't get the kind of what you need from it wouldn't be able to, I mean this is difficult, don't get me wrong, but uh, I wouldn't even want to try this with a Mac in any shape or form. Have I got that on the wrong way around? Perhaps I have. No? What the hell's going on? Well, me spinning out on camera for your viewing pleasure, I'm sure, is some sort of bizarre entertainment factor. So that's good. So 
some sort of bizarre entertainment factor. Right, these went down here, I think. So let's do that first. So, struggling to keep a cool head with this. Although, now I've done this much of this, it does make me think that I might want to get one of the... I'm sure you can get quad-core i7 motherboards that fit in this chassis from, like, China, you know? So it might be quite cool. Now I know that I can do this to a certain degree to investigate that. Because the, the, the limiting factor on this device is always going to be the dual-core even with the i7s. Dual cores have their limits in the modern world. Even on modern devices, there's only so much you can do with them. I have some making goofy noises from the other room. Which is equal parts annoying and endearing. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my head's in the way. Right. Now, does that thing go back on? Yes. Black so, right, there. Finagling this, finagling that. Gonna finagle a brand new hat. Ba -do -ba -do. That goes under there, through here. That's probably why it didn't fit a minute ago. As well as the red and grey wires. Why not get yourself a beer just to enjoy my faffing with laptops? Go for it, you've earned it, you know? You've earned yourself a beer. It's going to be whatever time it is that's probably to drink beer in your area. You deserve it. I think it's that about right. God alive, this is why I'm not a computer maker, I tell you. Wouldn't do this for a living. I do do it for entertainment. It's not seen flush. There we go. Flush. In regards to recreational activities for ThinkPad enthusiasts, this isn't one I would recommend. Certainly not. The adrenaline is high. The Lord, baby Jesus. <coughs> now, why is that not sitting in like some aspect of this is wrong? We need to figure out what it is. <coughs> there we go. God alive, this is why I don't do things like this. Right, let's get these silver screws in. That should hopefully provide me with a location where these things need to be fastened back to. If you're sticking with me through all this pain, you're my hero. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because then I'll know that you love me something not quite right here that's annoying me. <coughs> something not quite right. I can't put my finger on it. Literally in this case. I think something to do with this side here. Because the VGA port's not quite lined up. Catching, let me just go over. Should 
paid more attention when I was dismantling the lift. Where did these wires run? Down here. Around there. You know, people always say to me, why, why don't you... Uh, Build computers for a living, then. This is why. Sheer stress levels. Have I broken it? Is it going to work when I put it back together? Oh god, I don't even want to think about that. Don't even want to think about that. Are these wires going to reach? Build computers for a living, you make a fortune. Yeah, but I'll go bald from stress. Yeah. Righteous accusation. That is that one's correct. Yeah. No. Who knows? Jesus died for your sins. I'm on self destruct for your merest entertainment. He's not quite right there. Yes, yes, we fixed it. Yes! Alright, let's get these wires kicked in here. Make sure they're not going over the CPU fan. Tragic and a demonstration of incompetence that I cannot abide. Oh, this is fiddly. Perfect. Enough. Anyway. It'll do the job. Alright, now I've got to remember which wire goes on which. There's a grey one there. Grey one goes there. I don't know that much. Red and blue. <coughs> I believe. I'll put the wireless one module. You know what, I'm going to take a five minute break and then come back to this. Continuing the rebuild process. So, M search SSD for Linux distribution. Um, for the review video, I'm probably going to switch this out with... Um, so I've got M search SSD there. I've also got a SIM card and the... H, I forget what it's called now. H five three two one, or something like that. Uh, mobile broadband adapter for the review video. But for now, I wanted to put Linux on this, and that one goes on there. Let me just remember what I was doing. So we've got Wi-Fi reconnected, have we? Let's make that happen first. Gonna need some Wi-Fi. And then black there. Is it black? Yeah. And these can go out of the way. I don't have anything to bind them with, unfortunately. Oh no I do. There's a little bit of tape here. Let's move them out of the way. Get that shifted as well. And then we'll come back and tape them down in a second. I hope you can see well enough what I'm doing, otherwise this whole endeavour has been fruitless. Let's 
to include that black bag. Yeah. Get that in there. There's your own SATA SSD fitted. I've unplugged all the wires now, accidentally. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Hope you got yourself that beer. You deserve, you've earned it for sticking through this whole video with me. Delicious, tasty beer. Or, you know, a coffee if you're not a beer drinker. Or a vodka, you know, white wine spritzer. Lemonade and vodka, whatever tickles your fancy. You do you, and you get yourself a beer of some form. Or perhaps if you're in a country where CBD is legal, you'll have a CBD coffee. They do it around the corner for me, it's absolutely lovely. And all nice and legal like. Okay, so we've got MSATA SSD, the Bullshark fitted, 128 gig for our Linux distro. We've got our Wi-Fi reconnected. The little the little bits came off here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them, I'm going to tape them down to my MSATA SSD on the sticker so they don't short anything. Because I don't have any tape to hand. Tum, tum, tum. Am I recording? Yes, I am. Whatever, that's good enough. Good enough. Good enough for me. Next is palm rest. Let's get that lined up. Let's get the palm rest lined up nice and nice. Get the palm rest lined up nice and nice. Adrenaline, adrenaline, woohoo. Actually, we need the keyboard off to do the display. But I think, no, because we need the display to check whether it's working. Let's do the display next. That's got to be done. Put this front bezel off. There we go. Now we've got to unmount. Poor. I hope you guys are getting some entertainment out of this because it's frustrating. But well, I appreciate you if you know if you're this far through the video. You're my hero. Whoops, Daisy, where's that lovely thing just gone? Great. I'll find that again later. Right, let me pause and find that bit of paper, bit of plastic. Immediately found it, so that's good. Where did I put the other one? Where did I put the other one? Lost one, found the other. Ironically, I just lost the other one, so that's just infuriating and annoying. So I'm going to put a bit of black tape over there so it doesn't ruin the aesthetic. So we'll do that in a bit. All right, here's my supportive gaffer tape. If you've ever worked in any industry whatsoever, especially music, you realise is the cause of and solution to all musical problems. Get that off there. Just need to get it off this front bezel so I can get it out, which is almost done, and then rip off the bezel after you have done the screws, to rip off, that's a very irresponsible decision to rip isn't it? Mm-hmm. 
Three to remove. Carefully lift this up. And then you shall see me if you can. Just tap from here. A quick gentle pull. And that's the old display housing removed. Yes. for the love of things being good. Oh dear. Caffeine plus stress equals shaky hands. The amount of YouTubers I've seen that have shaky hands, assumably from too much coffee, is quite. You don't you don't notice it until you notice it, and then you see it everywhere. It's quite funny. Well, not, it's not even funny. I like. I just. I think there must be a lot of people. There must be like a cross correlate between doing YouTube videos, drinking too much caffeine, and feeling stressed by maintenance processes. There must be some sort of like. The least correlation, if not causation, though. Make sure that's out of the way. It's supposed to be tucked behind there. There we go. Ah. Okay. Let's get the original bezel back on because that one's not damaged. Yes, the camera's actually lined up because I didn't report this to you, but the camera wasn't lined up when I originally fit the bezel back in on the old one, so that's a bonus. Let's see, let's get that in there. Oh, it's a labour of love. Pray for me, if you believe in prayer, pray for me that it still works. Right, we need to find an additional little cover made out of black tape, which we will do in the future, or I'll track down what I, where I lost the other one off camera. Because I don't like having an exposed screw on the front, it ruins the illusion of refurbishment. I did just put it to one side, but it appears to have disappeared. It appears to have disappeared. Then the final stages, right? Keyboard in. Before I put all the screws in, I'm gonna have to do all this again. Just in case. I'm just gonna power up with the battery and the SSD in. So Oh you absolutely kidding me. Right, I'm gonna, right, I don't know if you can 
see why I'm screaming, but this hasn't gone under the black plastic. It's gone over the black plastic. Uh, so I'm going to do this off camera because it's just it's just too much stress. Um, I'll be back once I've redone everything I just did again. Okay. Right. So that wire just there was over the top. I've now put it and I actually rooted it a bit neater so it's actually a lot better than it would have been had I not messed it up the first time. It means our keyboard can now go in. God that was frustrating. It only took a minute or two. Now but now I've undone it once I know how to I knew how to repeat the procedure. Oh my god, I've just broken a key. Oh god. Settle down. Don't get too excited. Right. Right, there we go. Before I put all the bottom screws back in, I'm just going to reinsert my drive and the battery. God alive, so you should call this the, the palaver rather than the saga, I tell you. Oh, what a palaver. It's been like a kind of on and off, like a week's worth of work. Just like doing these upgrades. Pray to God and all the angels and baby Jesus. This just fires up and everything works. A moment of truth. So this this new bezel I got is a bit a bit tarnished. I might have to get the old uh, melanine on it or something. But it doesn't have a big epic crack down it, so it's still progress. Need to clean up that screen a little bit as well. And she is firing up. Boom! Yes! Yes! Screen is filthy though. have got cleaning cloth. So yeah, um, looks like the screen replacement, the screen bezel replacement worked nicely. Is that a bit of a scrub? So, I'm going to change angles and celebrate and then do a brief review of the full unit. Peace. So, here she is, the completed device. So, full upgrades that we've done are 9 cell battery, new display housing, new display glossy TM panel, 500 gig SSD, 16 gigs of RAM, new keyboard, and I think that's everything, so let me let me just log in. Oh, and an MSATA SSD for Linux, which will be featured in the other video that may be coming on this device. As you can see, we've got this lovely gloss panel, which has got really, re like, it, it looks a lot better in person than you're actually seeing it on there. But as you can see, so we've got 500 gig SSD, and oh, you can't really see that, but... We've got the MSATA, S MSATA SSD working as well, ready for Linux for the next video. Um, oh, did it just power off? Oh, well, that's misfortunate. No idea why that happened. Maybe I knocked the battery or something. That's annoying. Hope there's no endemic issues there. I think I can hear the CPU fan firing, so that's not a problem. Pull the screws back in. We've got the fingerprint word at reader drivers working, but obviously useless with Windows 10. So, yeah, I have been and will always be within reason Tech Dave. Here is the fully refurbished and replaced and fixed X230. Um, it's the i5 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gig SSD, 128 gig MSR SSD for Linux. Windows 10 Pro, and as I said, new keyboard, new display, new display housing, MSATA SSD. Very happy. Don't know what the issue is with why it's restarting, but I'll figure that out for the next video. If you stuck around this long, I really love you, specifically you, love you. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content, and look out for the full review on this video once I've worked out whatever's wrong with this thing. And then we've got it working, and I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.